You know, this is a very unique time of the year, and we're always reminded that there's a unique nature about the Jewish people. A friend of mine, a rabbi, was invited to spend a weekend at a synagogue where he had served for many years, and then he went back after about 10 years, and he runs into Goldberg, who had been on the board for many, many years. And he was surprised to learn that Goldberg was not in the temple anymore. He said, Goldberg, what happened? You used to be there all the time. You were there 24-7. You did everything. You were a volunteer and you were a lay leader. And he says, ah, you know, a few years ago, the temple went in a direction I didn't like. So some of us got together and we left and we made a new synagogue. Wow, that's good, the rabbi said. So that's where you worship now. Well, no. A few years after starting that group, uh, I had a falling out with them. I didn't agree with what they were doing, and so a few of us left. Oh, okay. Well, then what'd you do? Well, we rented a little hall. And that's where we were davening and praying on Shabbat. Oh, that's wonderful. I'm sure that's been very fulfilling. Well, not really. It didn't work out. We had some arguments, so I left. Now, he says, my wife and I are worshiping at home by ourselves. The rabbi says, wow, at least you found inner peace. Well, my wife began to develop ideas I did not like. So now she worships in the living room and I am in the garage. It's a quintessential story about the Jewish people. And as we come here, to me, it is a sign of the fact that we have a uniqueness of our own that is very special. And at times, we are contentious. And at times, we do argue. But there is something special about being part of our people. Now, the other thing we need to remember as we go forward on the High Holy Days is There is something, we come here, we always want to ask God for things. And that's, in one sense, a very Jewish thing. And that's okay. But I don't think God always sees it that way. You know, many years ago, the Hasidim would tell the story of a pious man who says, God, I'm so curious in your sphere of the world and all of your greatness and grandeur. Um, like, what is a penny to you? And God says, oh, a penny to me is like a million dollars. Wow. But like, what is a minute? You know, in my time, it's a minute. What is it for you? He says, one minute is a hundred years. And the guy thinks and he says, God, do you think I could have one of your pennies? <laughs> and God said, sure, just wait a minute. <laughs> we are always asking. But God wants certain things from us too. And so we come here today, and even though we are in the beauty of this sanctuary, we have the beauty of being together. This outside world is in tumult. The simplest way to describe it, because I'm not going to go into it in great detail, is I want to 
quote from Maureen Dowd of the New York Times who has this great ability to be profound and concise at the same time. Listen to what she says. This is our world. It isn't a pretty picture. One coast is burning, the other's underwater. In between, anti-abortion vigilantes may soon rampage across our territory. What has happened to this country? And then she says, we looked for the light at the end of the tunnel. We thought it was there, and now we are thinking it may just be a firefly. We feel the return of dread. We are rattled by the catastrophic exit from Afghanistan. We are confounded by all of these plagues of nature and the way that Mother Nature is throttling us. Other than that, everything is going well. <laughs> and I share that with you because in order for us to confront that world and all of its challenges, we need to be as strong as possible in every single way as a human being. I want to suggest to you that tonight and tomorrow as Rosh Hashanah ends and as we move towards Yom Kippur, this is the time of year that we are going to have to look inward in order to face the outward nature of all of our challenges. Isaiah teaches us so profoundly, and we'll hear it on Yom Kippur, don't hide from your own flesh. Don't hide from your inside. You have to acknowledge what's going on inside of you. This is our sacred responsibility. So one of the texts that we're going to use today that I think will help us as we try to be as strong as we can in the year to come is not from the Torah and it's not from the Talmud. It's a Jewish book, a Jewish book that doesn't mention Jews, Judaism, or the Torah. It's a very, very Jewish book. And our teacher who brings us this incredible, timeless message is Judith Viorst, who some of you know is an award-winning children's author. Her first foray into adult writing is called Necessary Losses. The loves, illusions, dependencies, and impossible expectations that all of us have to give up in order to grow. So we begin this new year. She will be the provider of our Torah. And I believe her wisdom connects us to the essence of the holidays and how we fulfill our responsibilities to ourselves. You come here, all of us, we all come here. You think about the past year as a human, as an American, as a citizen, as a child, as a parent, in all of the ways in which you function. And I know that a lot of you come here today to mourn. Maybe not in the traditional sense of mourning of the death of a loved one, but perhaps mourning the things we lost in the past year through the pandemic. Other things that have abandoned us, that have passed us by, that we have let go. We are in mourning about all kinds of loss. And Judith Fioris teaches us, this mourning is the necessary process of adapting 
to the losses and the failures of our life. There's more losses than failures. But even when we have had failure, we have to mourn that as well. Think about all the mourning that we are going through today. If we collectively wrote down everything that everyone is mourning. The end of a marriage, our children breaking away from us, the ending of a special relationship, the losses of what we once had, the loss of what had once been, and that's a big thing from the pandemic, the losses of what we hope to be in our life, and the loss of a beloved rabbi, Rabbi Mari Chernow. It is okay, as we're going to see, to mourn that. It's very much okay, and I encourage you to do it. But those of you who have experienced a death of a loved one know there can and should and must be an end to the mourning. The mourning is good. It can't be forever. That's about all of our losses. The mourning has to have an end so you can go forward. That's very, very important, both of those things. And she teaches that. She says we are responsible for ensuring that all of our mourning of our losses takes place, but we have a duty to make sure it ends as well. Thus, the High Holy Days become a time to take responsibility for our losses, a willingness to overcome our basic instinct to be in denial about our losses, and to accept the sad but important truth that all of these losses are de necessary losses. They are part of the pain of life and everyone has them in their own way. And there is pain and loss in being in a close community where someone leaves us. So here is where the Machsor will converge perfectly with Judith Fiorst. Number one, our present is irrevocably shaped by our past our upbringing. The Machsor talks about that. Number two, we can never forget the link between the outer realities and the inner realities. Number three, there is one thing that can help us to triumph from the past, from our losses, and that is our sense of understanding of number four. We are all capable of changing. No one should ever say, well, I just can't change. I can't do that. I won't be able to get beyond that. Everyone who wants to is capable of change. Today we acknowledge these losses. Many see them as a human tax we pay, not just so we can live, but with some of that pain that we go through, there is some good news. When we give up certain expectations of ourselves and others, we grow. And with some effort, we see these losses as a way to become fully developed human beings and better human beings than we ever thought, even though we think we're going to go in the opposite direction. Think about any loss you ever had in your life. Doesn't matter what it is. Any loss. Oh, I'm wrapped up there. Sorry. Any loss that you have suffered. You left someone. They left you. You had to let go. You had to change. You had to move on. We remember all that pain, don't we? 
we reject, recognize all that anguish that we have had, but think about the growth that came to you from this loss. That's part of the message that I want you to hear today. It's not just the sadness of the loss. It's what are we going to do? What are we going to do now? How are we going to grow? Judith Vior says, our life is a litany of loss. And whether it's when we were young and we realized we couldn't marry our mother or father, and that was very painful. And then we were alone and then these siblings came and they joined us or we joined them, she says. And at some point we realized the world didn't revolve around us and we wanted to kill them for having some of our parents' love. And it's been like that ever since. Friends, we are human. We are fallible and we are not perfect. But we need to acknowledge, this is especially a good message for those of you who have children, younger children, we want to be the perfect parent, the best parent, and sometimes we're still going to fail our children, as Judith Vior says, because the gap between knowing and doing is very, very great. The High Holy Days is not just about loss and pain. It's about accepting and adapting, acknowledging, moving on, how do we meet the future? Obviously, when someone dies, this is the most profound loss. But there's a parallel between the loss of death and all of our other losses of this last year, and I'm sure you could write them down. Here are our choices when we have loss. A, we can choose to be disabled by it. We can cripple ourselves in such a way so that we can't function. Some people choose that. But second, in our tradition, we suggest that out of memory and pain, we forge a new adaption and a new way to live, a way in which we can cope with the necessary loss, whatever it is. On the High Holy Days, we will see that we have responsibilities to ourselves and to God. So it is important that we be able to move forward as full, as complete, as whole as we can be. And sometimes loss stops us from being that person. One final thought. I know that for many of you this past year has been whether the things at the temple or in the pandemic has been a difficult year. It's been a year of disappointment, of pain, of, of heartache, of things not happening the way we wanted them to. And for some of you, there's pain that is in there for many, many years. So let me suggest this is our year to learn and grow from our losses. And in that process of growing and changing and adapting, I promise you, you can become whole again, not perfect, but you can become whole, a person ready to live in this world with a real and an authentic sense of who you are this is our responsibility to ourselves, and I think this is what God asks of us. Today we are reminded that the High Holy Days can help us to take the present to build the future, whether it's in this room or for our congregation. Friends, we are good people. We are not perfect, but we are good people and we can be better. That is what God asks us to do. Amen.
And let us say, and let us say, Amen. And let us say, and let us say, Amen. And let us say, and let us say, Say, and let us say Amen.